I was extremely bored one night. And bad things tend to happen when there's nothing to keep me out of trouble. I found myself down a rabbit hole looking at old or interesting websites. I think I saw the Space Jam site still up like a small internet time capsule. Seeing that had been a bit of a trip down memory lane. Through clicking random links, I found a site claiming to be a monster blind dating site. I only saw it for a second and the entire thing went down before I got a good look at it. After digging for information about it, I read it could only be accessed at midnight. If you clicked on the link at 12.01, you may get a glance of it, but then it would go down before you could fill out a dating profile. I thought it was a cute little gimmick. There was no way it could be real. I mean, a monster dating site sounded like something my kid sister would read. But I kind of did want to see what the site looked like. The second it was up, I saw a chunky mouse cursor and blocky sidebars that reminded me of what the internet looked like in the 90s. I can still remember the dial-up tone and my Neopets username. The next night I found myself counting down the seconds until midnight. I refreshed the page a second after the clock rolled over. An odd excitement came over me when I saw the site go live. It reeked of the early internet and I loved it. The webpage didn't lag and didn't have any terrible design choices that made it impossible to read text or find links like real older sites. I didn't plan on filling out a dating profile just to look around. I had a countdown of 13 minutes and not much else to look at. The homepage displayed a few dating profiles of monsters, complete with grainy images making it really hard to see their features. All of them were booked up. When I refreshed the page, a few of the profiles changed and at least two of them had some availability. When I clicked on them, they became booked up within a second. Were other people on this site? Or was it just a script running in the background? Was this just a fun little joke or some sort of code for people to actually hire sex workers in a discreet way? I thought I would never find out the answer. Another option was to make your own dating profile instead of trying to book a certain monster. It asked very basic questions and thankfully lacked a spot to fill out your credit card information. As a joke, I filled out a fake profile and used my burner email address I made for things just like this. My time ran out and the site went down. At least it had been fun while it lasted. I wanted to get a screenshot of it, but when I did, the image was black. I didn't find that strange, but I did feel a little disappointed that I didn't have any proof of the odd website. That was until my cell phone pinged, showing I had a text. I read the message of dread coming to my stomach. This could not be right. It was from an unknown number saying a date was arranged at 10pm next Friday, with a Google Street View image of a nearby street corner. I tried to think of a way this joke site got my phone number. I was under a family plan, so my number wasn't even under my own name. If they somehow got my name from... What? Hacking my computer somehow? Did I click a bad link somewhere? My antivirus was normally so good at protecting me from my own mistakes. Maybe I should stop being cheap and pay for a VPN. Just to be safe, I deleted the message and blocked the number. I then did a massive password overhaul and a few virus scans that came up empty. I kept an eye on my bank account and emails to see if anyone tried getting into my accounts. But nothing happened in the next few days. I learned my lesson that just clicking random links and going on a sketchy site wasn't worth it. I also avoided the street corner for the rest of the week. I needed to take a long way home from work, but refused to be anywhere near the place. I got worried about how they got my address. Did they really have my address or just a general location and send the text to freak me out? I couldn't really do anything about it, besides keeping my doors locked and an eye out for anything strange. The cops would laugh in my face if I brought this to them. I fully planned on staying in Friday night. Best not to be even outside in case this wasn't a prank pulled by someone with a bad sense of humor. But a friend of mine called me over, requesting I bring him some soup from a restaurant down the street. Everything was within walking distance, and my body was sick as hell. He didn't want to pay the $10 delivery fee plus the tip when he could just ask me to do it and give me the tip instead. I put aside my fear and did him the favor to get him his damn broccoli and cheddar soup. He'd done a bunch of stuff for me in the past, so I needed to help him out. On the way back from his place, I kept my hands in my pockets and looked around, expecting someone to be following me. It was Friday night and almost 10. The sun had long set and the streets were empty of other people. I took the long way again, still refusing to go near that street corner. My pulse rose every time I heard a sound on my walk. 
Only two blocks to go from home, and I relaxed a little. I felt silly letting that sight get to me so badly. From behind, I heard some papers fluttering in the wind. Nothing strange about that, so I didn't turn around to look. If I did, I would have gotten a head start at running. Mr. Stevens? A voice came from behind, and I stopped dead in my tracks. The voice sounded paper thin and hard to hear over the other rustling sounds. I realized that papers could not be fluttering in the wind because there was no breeze. Slowly, I turned my head, trying to see the source of the voice that called my name. The street was lined with lampposts. From between two posts, a shape came out of the darkness and into the same light I stood under. The thing was at least ten feet tall and long. The body was in constant motion and made of many different sized pieces of dark stained paper. I didn't see any kind of arms or legs on the creature. Instead, it appeared to float just a few inches off the ground. I darted my eyes upwards to look at the face. A large scroll hung down from the forehead attached to a massive, twisted golden horn. The paper covering most of the face had odd golden writing on it. Under the paper, I saw a pair of sunken dark eyes and a mouth that reached to each end of the face. The hair was also made up of those papers flowing outwards. They were covered with the same golden writing. We made eye contact, and a smile came that showed off countless needle-pointed teeth. Yeah, no. I booked it. I wasn't going to deal with whatever that thing was. I ran down the block, my legs burning within seconds. I wished I'd stayed in shape. The thing following behind, easily keeping pace... The countless papers rustled with each movement, and the damn thing started to laugh, making my heart nearly stop from fear. The laughter grew, making my head get dizzy. The sound echoed off the empty road and sounded so clear, almost as if someone was clinking glasses together. My vision faded, and I found myself running the wrong way. I should have taken a left to go home, but I turned right instead and towards the park. When I pulled through the brain fog, I didn't have a chance to correct myself. If I turned around, I would run right into the creature chasing me. I couldn't keep up running for much longer. My face dripped with sweat, red from effort. I ducked inside some trees, a part of the very small park, and was thankful my city even had a park like this. I slammed into a tree, panting and listening for the monster. The laughter stopped, and I didn't hear the paper rustling again. Was I going crazy? There was no way this thing was real. I shook my head, trying to figure out what I should do. I pulled out my phone to call for help. Even if it wasn't real, I needed someone to come down here and get me to the hospital, to get my brain looked at. I stood sweating and fear turning my body cold. My phone refused to turn on. I held down all the side buttons, forcing the phone to restart. It came back on, but the screen showed a glowing golden symbol, and not the photo of my baby sister as my lock screen. This simply could not be happening. I needed to find a person, a real person, to help. I looked up through the dark trees and saw some leaves that looked a bit strange. All at once, golden writing flickered on, showing the outline of the monster wrapped around a tree staring in my direction. I let out a scream that in any other situation would be embarrassing. Blinded by fear, I ran right into a tree, smashing my nose and causing it to bleed. I ran again, mind blank. I had no thoughts but to just get the hell out of there. I spilled out from the trees and into the park. The play equipment was off in the distance, but no one was in sight. I also considered trying to hide in the plastic slide or inside the worn-out, hollow plastic dinosaur that had seen better days. My feet became tangled up trying to race up the hill and I fell forward. The papers were on me at once. I rolled on my back, looking up at the creature and directly at the face inches from my own. The eyes glittered in twisted joy at my fear. I was mistaken about this thing not having any limbs. A set of arms came out from under the papers to grab my own. The ice-cold skin made my entire body crawl. I kicked my feet and more arms shot out. Soon I was pinned to the hard ground with too many hands to count. The creature let out another ringing laugh that made me nearly pass out. I snapped back and the thing flicked out a tongue to run it over my face tasting the blood from my nose. I do not normally kiss on the first date, but you are a precious little thing. The monster spoke, the whispery voice causing my body to shake. D date 
I choked out, mind moving slowly. Was that damn monster dating website real? I didn't have a chance to really think about it. The face came down over my own, the flesh colder than anything I've ever felt. The sheer cold hurt my skin. Seconds passed and the pain became bearable, and the icy feeling started to fade. The hands gripped tighter, bruising in some places. When the monster pulled away, I gasped for air, unable to do anything else. I looked up and did not like the look in that creature's eyes. It looked starving, mouth wide and twisted in an uneven smile with saliva starting to drip out the corners of the mouth. The long tongue came out and licked it away, but it was a losing battle to keep its face clean. I started to worry this thing had other ideas for me besides tearing my organs out as a snack. You are such a darling creature. I cannot help myself. I do hope you forgive my forward nature. The monster spoke, and the tone sounded as hungry as it looked. I struggled again against those hands, knowing I wouldn't get free. To my horror, the papers fanned out, and they all came down wrapping around my body and blacking out my vision. I assumed this was another way this monster could eat me, and was thankful it was fairly painless. I jumped awake, finding myself in my bed safe and sound. Well, not entirely sound. My body had hand-shaped bruises everywhere the monster had grabbed me. I looked around, stunned by the previous events. It was early in the morning, and I wore the same thing I did the night before. I even still had my shoes on. I heard pans moving coming from my small kitchen and smelt cooking. Slowly, I started to leave the room, holding a bowling trophy as a weapon. I really didn't have anything else, and thought the heavy base might do some damage. I didn't get the jump on the one inside my kitchen. The person turned around from where they stood at the stove and gave such a wide and blinding smile it made my head stop working. They were tall with an androgynous body. They were wearing my clothing that didn't fit on their frame. I've never seen someone with such a beautiful shade of dark skin. Every feature was perfect down to evenly arranged, pulled back, long dreadlocks. I made you some breakfast. I can't stay long. You need to buy some more food. There isn't much here. Do you need money? Hang on. My mind was still in shock, leaving me unable to respond. I watched as the stranger placed some scrambled eggs on a plate and set them down on the counter. I didn't own a table and just ate at my computer desk. When the person stopped in front of me, I became so spellbound by their golden eyes that I didn't even notice they took my weapon away and placed something in my hand. I shook my head to look down to see a small pile of glittering gold pellets in my hand. No. They had a shape I recognized, and I wanted to toss the gold when I saw they were human teeth of different sizes. I can turn things into gold. I had these just taken up space, so I made them useful. Get yourself something nice. And don't be late for our date next Friday. Although I don't mind chasing you down. That was the most fun I've had in a while. I couldn't find my voice. I had a million questions. The first one was why they were carrying around human teeth. With so many questions, I found it impossible to pick one to speak. This person didn't look like the monster from the night before. They didn't look like a monster at all. When a quick kiss was placed against my cheek, and I felt the cold feeling all over again, I knew who this creature was. I... what? Date? This Friday? I croaked out stunned thoughts jumbled together. Oh, you are too much. Three more quick kisses were placed on my cheek, and if it was anyone else, it would have been a cute action. The monster drew away and then quickly headed towards the door, face shining with a smile. I normally eat my partners quickly, but I'll keep you around for a bit. We'll have a great time together, until I can't hold back. Without being able to stop them, the monster left through the front door with a wave. A second after, it peeked ahead through to add one more thing. My name's Guild. And then they were gone again, leaving me standing in the middle of my kitchen with a handful of golden human teeth and the first breakfast someone had made for me since I was a child. I put the teeth down first and ate the eggs with some issues. My stomach turned. Somehow I'd gotten myself into a huge mess. I would need to keep seeing that nightmare of a monster for dates until it decided to eat me. My life is now to be decided by someone else. I quickly sent a text to my sister, telling her I loved her, in case Guild came right back for brunch. 
She was confused at the random message, but I figured it was long overdue. The only upside to this entire nightmare I found myself in was Guild looked cute disguised as a human. And I suppose I didn't have to worry about money either. But I didn't want to ask Guild for gold, fearing what I might be handed next. My new relationship started with hundreds of red flags I can't do a damn thing about. Do me a favor, and if you come across a monster dating website, don't humor it. I wish I never made that mistake. Just don't go clicking on random links online. You'll never really know where it might take you and what kind of horrible outcome it may have on your life. Become a channel member today for early access, bonus videos, and special emojis only available to members. Check out the description below or click the join button for more info. If you'd like another way to help support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Jordan Group Horror. As a patron, you'll get access to bonus videos and content, you'll be credited at the end of every video going forward, and if you decide to stay for three months, I'll name a character after you which will be featured in a Hollow's End story. Links to join the Patreon are in the description. Thanks everyone for listening, please like, subscribe, and comment to help the channel continue to grow, and see you again next time at 4pm Eastern Standard Time. Hope you have a great night.